Hello and welcome to the Tau update. Uh, it's the August update and we tell you all about what happened during July uh, from the dev team. So I'll pass it over to Karim for his overview this month. Thank you, Fola. Um, this is our update uh, for the month of uh, July. Um, the team, uh, uh, the development effort, uh, as you all know, is uh, mostly centered around enhancing the performance uh, of TML. So um, a couple of months ago, um, uh, Ohad suggested we implement or show how we can implement uh, Sudoku in uh, TML. And that has turned out to be a very useful exercise uh, because it uh, led us to uh, make several improvements uh, in the core uh, TML engine. So uh, Tomas implemented uh, the uh, Sudoku solution in TML, uh, but he's still working on uh, improving uh, the performance of uh, that solution because uh, the best solvers out there take only a fraction of a second uh, to do it. So we're, um, we want to see TML be as performant as uh, the best engines out there. So, um, so yeah, so he has a solution, but we're still looking for a uh, more performance solution. A, um, uh, Tomas has also been uh, implementing a very useful feature for uh, TML developers. Uh, I like it very much, which is uh, syntax highlighting uh, in VS code and uh, BIM editors in uh, TML. It makes uh, uh, the life of TML uh, uh, coders very, uh, very nice. Um, he's also added uh, uh, some improvements to the um, uh, debugging capabilities of uh, of TML uh, as in the form of a CLI uh, option, and he continued his uh, work on uh, state uh, blocks as well. Uh, Luca is also working on another uh, important uh, optimization of TML, uh, which is the uh, what we call the two CNF extraction, and uh, the objective of two CNF extraction is to minimize the size of BDDs and avoid the exponential uh, explosions. So uh, when uh, extracting as many terms as possible from the BDD uh, uh, allows a reduction in the size. And uh, uh, after a few uh, false starts, uh, he uh, Ohad has been uh, able to basically guide him in the best way of uh, implementing the 2CNF, but uh, he's uh, still working on that. Uh, Maurice, uh, same way, is uh, working on uh, some uh, TML optimizations, and uh, uh, the main one is, uh, is this, the squaring transformation, which is uh, uh, another idea of a HADS that uh, allows a TML program basically to execute more than one uh, rule in a, in a step, and um, uh, the idea is that that could be applied uh, recursively, uh, so we can, uh, so that a, prog a TML program can execute uh, uh, many more rules in uh, in one step. And uh, Maurice has uh, implemented the first version of that, but it still requires uh, some uh, further optimizations. Uh, he's also implemented uh, what he calls a dead variable elimination algorithm that uh, arose uh, that, need, that is useful in uh, certain uh, TML programs. He's uh, also been uh, uh, continued the integration with the, with the Z3 engine. Uh, with uh, CQC uh, optimizations or uh, CQC extraction for uh, first order logic. And uh, he's also uh, extended that, um, yeah, for first order logic, uh, like I said. Uh, Umar continued uh, his uh, universe of size two uh, uh, program transformation as well. This is another essential transformation that will probably be um, enabled by default because it's so good. Um, it will, um, He's also been working on a, on a type system where he implemented the ability to a lot of code uh, refactoring uh, to rearrange uh, the variables uh, in the BDD, which allows us to uh, find or try to find the best uh, uh, variable order for BDDs, because as we all know, BDDs are very uh, sensitive uh, to variable order. So that required a lot of internal um, factorization, but it becomes uh, very transparent uh, using uh, a function he calls uh, the pause function. Uh, he's also uh, started implementing uh, uh, a special variable type that can count to infinity by increasing uh, its bit size uh, as needed. So that's uh, uh, also a huge uh, uh, capability uh, addition to TML. Uh, Juan continued his work on uh, second order logic, and uh, but also he's been uh, instrumental in helping Tomas with the Sudoku implementation where um, he was uh, able to um, 
extend uh, the implementation of uh, first order logic in TML to um, help it handle the uh, Sudoku uh, problem uh, robustly. On the Agora Live uh, platform, uh, Andre, again, uh, working full time on that. Um, he's uh, uh, revamped the entire uh, payment system actually in Agora Live and uh, made it more robust and uh, integrated it tightly with the uh, within the progress of the video uh, where he checks for several error conditions and uh, also enabled the, the payment of uh, within the within the video for uh, fractional uh, token uh, payments uh, within the video, uh, depending on the duration. Um, I think that's it uh, for uh, this month in terms of um, uh, development tasks. Back to you, Fala. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Karim. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Umar for his update this month. Hello, hi team. Kareem did mention uh, the work that I have been doing um, in this month. But basically, it's uh, focusing on developing the uh, bit transformations um, in size two universe. Uh, and it relies on uh, uh, the type systems that we developed earlier. Uh, so that allows us to uh, control the, uh, the, the size of the variable uh, at, up to the extent of a single uh, bit, and that gets reflected into the BDDs and, and their co corresponding sizes. Um, so we did have a translation uh, from the uh, typed program uh, to the uh, bit uh, size program uh, to the uh, then to the BDDs. Uh, but now we intend to um, develop the capability to uh, be able to permute the ordering of uh, variables uh, um, uh, within the uh, BDD, but doing it at a higher level first. Um, so th that required a, a kind of a, a generic uh, um, function pointer-like capability that can um, take whatever ordering and it can seamlessly uh, be applied uh, within the code, uh, both uh, in a direction from transforming from the original program to the bit universe and then recovering from the BDDs back to the uh, original program. So the same piece of code can uh, be used um, in a way that it can uh, uh, allow different types of orderings. Uh, so that capability was built in uh, uh, during this month. There was a testing, some refactoring, um, and um, some bugs were also discovered. So that took some time to um, you know, analyze and uh, make fixes. Uh, and during the process, uh, we did discover uh, some better ways of doing this. Um, so um, some effort went in uh, changing the previous implementation and improving it with the new uh, implementation we had. Um, uh, on the roadmap, the next thing is that we have the ability to grow the, uh, uh, the type. Um, um, so that requires a, a, a thought on or a new design choices around the type system and also uh, in the transformation. Uh, so we'll be working on that. Uh, also the ability to uh, change uh, the, the types of the program on the fly and to be able to reorder the bits according to the new types uh, um, as uh, 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 with, the, with the goal to um, do a better optimization. So that is, will be a challenging task um, so that will be also um, as a part of our roadmap. Thank you. Thank you very much, Umar. And I'll pass it over to Luca. Thank you, Folo. Um, and hello, everyone. Um, so the main breakthrough of the month was that I realized uh, under the guidance of Ohad how to theoretically do the 2CNF extraction and how this can be placed um, in the universe uh, of BD on the framework uh, of using BDDs. And so the first steps then were to um, figure out what part of the implementation to start with and to have a rough roadmap um, on what features should be tackled one after the other so that at the very end, we have a very efficient 2CNF extraction. And as Kareem mentioned, the goal is to reduce the um, um, explosion uh, of the BDDs in memory so that we get faster overall performance. And this especially um, will be helpful in 
um, queries which use constraints. So, ex for example, the Sudoku uh, in a naive first order um, implementation will run uh, a lot faster under this optimization uh, once it's there. Um, so the first steps then were to figure out how the basic algorithms will work. Uh, and I've now started to implement um, all of this. And yeah, I'm looking forward to get this feature ready as fast as possible. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Luca. Um, now I'll pass it over to uh, Andre for his update this month. Hello. Last month, I was finally able to finish our Agoras Live payment system. Uh, did necessary improvements to it and uh, was finally able to fully integrate the payment system inside uh, the video conferencing platform. Uh, some of the additions are uh, under the surface. I can't uh, demonstrate it, but some of the additions are on the surface and let me demonstrate to you how it works. For example, we have Albert Einstein waiting for his student in the class with the presentation ready and let's switch to the student. Uh, let's make a call to Albert Einstein. As you see, uh, we must pay some not whole number of Agoras for this class. Previously, and I haven't noticed that, and the whole system wasn't able to process uh, decimal spaces and uh, I did necessary improvements both in the payment system uh, and in Agoras Life uh, database to support uh, decimal places. So now we can pay uh, not only whole numbers, but uh, numbers with decimal places also. So let's pay the required amount of Agoras. For it, we must, uh, we must log in to our web wallet and after we successfully log on to our web wallet uh, we can pay for uh, for uh, for the class here is the payment in uh, in testing mode it doesn't show the details in the production this form shows the details of payment let's make the payment And we can see now the payment on uh, on the blockchain. Let me show you. Here is our payment on the blockchain. And we... Now let's go to the class. First of all, of course, uh, Albert Einstein must let us in. Okay, we accept. And as you see, uh, the student appeared on uh, on the list. And after necessary checking on the background uh, on the blockchain, uh, the user appeared as paid on uh, Albert Einstein list. But what if what if the user decide to give away his payment details to somebody else? Uh, in that case, the system inside video conference platform keeps track of uh, payment information used and uh, it doesn't allow several users to use the same payment information. Let's see how it works. Uh, for example, we have already a call with Albert Einstein and somebody else is trying to make a call. We need to confirm, of course, uh, this user. And you see, the first one user who used uh, the payment code was automatically removed from the session. So only one user can use uh, payment code uh, inside, inside the conference call. This is the idea. So we have, for example, our session completed. Uh, Albert Einstein is finishing the session. And we go back uh, to the main screen, as you see. OK, and we can now uh, leave uh, 
leave our feedback to, to our constraint. Uh, and that's it. Notice that uh, it shows prices both in Agoras and uh, current price uh, in US dollars. And easy, as you may notice, uh, current uh, currency rate Agoras to US dollar now always visible uh, in the head of, uh, of Agoras license site. That's it. So what's left? What's left for the next month? Uh, first things first, I finally will give away the website for testing to gather all necessary additions or glitches I haven't noticed. Uh, next, uh, I need to check, of course, uh, the review system, as you see now, because I haven't tested it yet. And uh, I hope, I hope that's it. That's it, we can switch to to production after that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and have a great August. Bye. Thank you very much, Andre. And now I'll pass it over to Tomash for his update this month. Thank you, Fala. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this month, uh, I've continued on finding a faster way of solving Sudoku in TML, the most straightforward way by using first order logic uh, make VDD to explode in size. Uh, there are some TML optimizations in progress, which should help. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I and Juan, we started to look into combining current approach with uh, backtracking to effectively uh, reduce the size required. Um, I've also did progress on implementing state blocks uh, feature. I was speaking last month and uh, it's uh, it, it will be finished soon. Uh, I've also added new command line option, which helps debugging TML programs. Uh, there is already an option print updates, which says to TML to print uh, all newly added and deleted facts each step. And this debug output can be very long. So I've added an option called print updates if with a name of a state as argument. And this option is limiting printing of updates only uh, to steps where a provided state exists in programs database. And um, states in TML are, you can imagine it as a zero array term, which is basically table without any columns. And uh, last and not least, uh, I've finished initial versions of TML syntax highlighting support for VS Code Editor and also for uh, Vim Editor. So thanks, that's all from me this month. Thank you very much, Tomash. Um, Professor Benzmuller, would you like to give us your update for this month? Hello. Um, actually, I'm working on uh, three different corners or three different directions. So one is uh, that I'm part of the academic panel, as everybody knows, and um, we have made some um, further efforts towards the KR language to be used in that context. There are concrete proposals now, uh, language set up for law of changing the law that has um, a decent expressive power, but especially then also some computationally well-behaved um, uh, territory it's it's in. Um, we have also discussed in the academic panel then still what kind of additional challenges we might have to address and I've pointed also to some um, uh, orthogonal um, issues that we might pay attention to and maybe that uh, restriction in the language also means that we are eventually having problems with some proofs that require a bit more expressivity. There's an ongoing discussion on how to balance well between the two parts. Um, we also continue that uh, discussion partly today. That is one part of the story, and I think there's uh, more to say from the side of um, uh, the other academics on board, uh, Enrico Franconi, and also um, contribution by, by Uhad, which are very essential here in particular to address the law, changing the law. And uh, there's uh, further work I'm involved in is I gave these these kind of um, workshops they focus partly on um, automated to improving particular resolution style proving I showed um, um, uh, step so so stepping from propositional reasoning to first order reasoning and higher order reasoning I I pointed to the the different um, challenges that come into the play but also the different new um, opportunities you get at the different expressivity levels that was um, the the workshops and the 
in the last uh, two weeks. And uh, today we also talked a bit about orthogonal aspects for the and challenges for the project that have to do also with um, user interaction and so on and what, what we might expect here. Uh, on the implementation side, I'm um, working on this external T improver uh, that, uh, not T improver actually, and uh, uh, model finder. Uh, also intended to be a team improver and actually made uh, further progress in the latter direction, but also in the model finding um, sense. So what I can do now is I can enter proposition of first order problems, even partly higher order meanwhile, um, and um, ask the team improver to find me a satisfying model uh, for a given um, domain size, so given cardinality constraints on a domain, I can even give it a list of such constraints and it will then go through the list and find me the smallest one. Um, so the smallest domain sites in which it can satisfy formula. Um, and right now I'm extending that also to infinite domains uh, by, by using scolumization and, and free variables. It's a Tableau approach. Uh, it's running partly concurrent um, and it's running um, external so far. Um, and I think in the next month, I should have everything together so that it will be at the same time a tune prover and a counter model finder or model finder. So we give it a problem and it will tell you theorem or uh, counter satisfiable and it will spit you out some, some model information. Um, yeah, my expectation is uh, next month or eventually a few weeks later that I have um, the entire things together so that uh, you get an, a relatively robust behavior. In some parts, I made it a talk decisions. Um, they can be improved on and there's much of uh, room as usual if you start such a project for um, uh, if in uh, further implementations in regard of gaining efficiency, that's that's quite usual. The first thing is to get an entire loop together. I think I talked already too much, and I keep it short now here and uh, give over and back to Fola. Thank you very much, Professor Benzmuller. It's always a pleasure to hear from you, um, and, and I think our community would love to hear a lot more from you as well. So you, you, there's no uh, time limit for you for sure. Um, so, uh, Marissi. Please, your update this month. Hi, everyone. Um, so this month, um, I um, extended the Z3 containment check to support tools containing first order logic and arithmetic. So before you could only kind of um, check whether two queries um, which are conjunctive contain each other, but now you can kind of check a, a broader range, a larger range of queries. Um, and this will help. Um, this will help in some of the other optimizations which I have to do um, for the TML um, engine. Um, another thing which I did was I implemented um, the minimization of uh, queries containing faster than logic using the containment check which I just mentioned. So if um, if you input a, 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 a large query um, in TML, um, this algorithm uses Z3 in order to um, in order to make it smaller and to remove the redundant parts of the, uh, of the query. And doing that um, will hopefully will in the end result in a fast execution of the query um, because it's smaller. Um, so that's one of the things that I did. Um, another um, thing that I worked on um, was um, what we call the square transformation. Um, which essentially, as I Karen mentioned, um, makes um, if you start off with if it takes a program, it takes a TML program, and it makes another one, which for every step of its execution executes two steps of the original program's execution. Um, and yeah, you could also call that in another programming languages it might be called inlining transformation. Um, and hopefully, um, we're hoping that it will. Um, opportunities um, for us to, to minimize the queries and to kind of eliminate certain queries. Um, but it's not yet performant, so um, I'll have to continue working on it next month. Um, another um, optimization which I implemented is uh, the dead variable elimination algorithm, um, which I realized that I saw the opportunity for the dead variable elimination algorithm when I realized that certain variables um, in rules weren't being used and were making um, we're making certain parts of the TML engine slow because it was co causing big data structures. So once I implemented the dead variable elimination algorithm, um, I was able to make some programs that used to take forever to execute um, 
go down to you know go down to 10 seconds or, or 20 seconds so that was a very effective uh, transformation um and yes um i guess just general um the other stuff which i've done this month is just general code, code maintain, maintenance um, in particular I discovered um some latent bugs and in, um, in the back end um which um one and um some of the other programs in the team um helped to resolve so yeah, that's it for this month. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Marissi. And uh, Juan, uh, over to you, my friend. Tell us about your July. Thank you, Fola, and hi, everybody. Um, well, this month, I continue working on, uh, first of all, the logic, especially, uh, because uh, I'm looking forward to get the robust uh, implementation in order to really uh, try to wrap up the, the approach that I have, I've been mentioning about second order logic. Uh, so I completed the uniqueness quantifier, which was remaining there to do. And I also really doing a more comprehensive testing of the feature in order to clear out any pending bug on inside uh, first order logic. So regarding Sudoku, um, I joined the forces to to try to figure out what was going on. And uh, in particular, this uh, using Sudoku as a benchmark, uh, it's sort of a not very friendly test case or really a worst case uh, a scenario for us because uh, uh, Sudoku has a single solution and in TML, we are looking forward to get any, uh, uh, sorry, sorry every as every as variable assignment that satisfies or solves a problem while in sudoku the, the purpose is to get uh, the, the, the problem statement it's uh, uh, about a single solution so it's sort of uh, let's say metaphorically like fishing uh, with an harpoon versus uh, fishing with a net which would be what we do in tml uh, so in terms of uh, yeah, we, we are aware that we have some performance penalties. We have been somehow uh, reviewing the first order algorithm or the solution algorithm that we have there in order to improve our uh, heuristics or, or uh, search of the uh, uh, the combinatorial space. Uh, but of course, we are we we are not looking forward to tackle any of the state that uh, state of the art SAT solvers, but to get uh, more more uh, an improved performance uh, uh, solution there um, so uh, so so that's that's generally what I have been dealing with benchmarking first of the logic and debugging and testing it further looking forward to to as well uh, wrap up this the, the second order feature that I've been describing for for some time already so thanks. All right, thank you very much, Juan. And uh, over to Ohad for his update this month. Yeah, last time I mentioned that I uh, worked on solving Boolean equations and I solved it for the atomless case and for the atomic, atomic, less, atomic case. Um, I was stuck, but uh, I managed to uh, find a solution for the general case for all Boolean algebras. Um, it, is, uh, it was open problem for many, many years maybe 100 years and it's the first time that there is a solution that completely characterizes uh, all possible solutions. Well, all possible solutions is not a good way to say, but completely characterizes that the case where the problem is solvable. And then if, with using this, I continue to um, develop my uh, new logic that solves completely the problem of uh, uh, self-referential laws of changing the laws. It can be seen to some extent, uh, to some limited extent, I must warn you, um, self-aware uh, kind of AI. Um, I uh, started to write a paper that outlines all this uh, new logic, uh, which is an extension to, to any logic. You can take any logic and enhance it with those constructions in order to allow it to include self-referential methodological statements. This paper is already 30 pages long and I still have a lot of work. I'm not sure if and how I will publish it, but that's 
indeed my main focus uh, this month and uh, for the next month as well. Thank you very much, Ahad, for your update this month. And we've actually got a uh, additional message from uh, Professor Franconi and his update for the month of July. So uh, without further ado, I'll pass it over to Professor Enrico Franconi. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This month, uh, the most uh, relevant activity that we did as a bunch of logicians and scientists discussing on the foundation of Tao has been basically the proposal by OHAD to have a special uh, formalization for the for stating the law for changing the laws. Um, and so he proposed a very interesting uh, idea based on Boolean algebras, which basically means that we can uh, define uh, um, rules on how to change laws on arbitrarily uh, defined uh, basic laws defined in any other logic, uh, which is interesting. And moreover, these uh, rules for changing can apply to the, these rules of changing themselves. So it's, they, can have, they can be self-referential. And that's a major breakthrough, I believe. And this, uh, the foundation is uh, very solid and very interesting and very new, I would say applied in this particular field. So um, I guess while um, um, OAD is progressing and we are progressing in, in finalizing this, this level, we are already starting to think about the basic logic uh, that would serve the purpose of expressing regular laws. And uh, we are focusing on uh, probably uh, description logics uh, in the form of the OWL standard from the W3C. So this would be have, would have the advantage to be a standard and uh, to already provide a lot of research about it, uh, even though uh, in this context, uh, probably uh, novel techniques uh, for implementation, but also um, extensions to, to, to capture phenomenon that would be interesting for the users of Tao, maybe this extension would be would have to be studied and researched. So I guess this has been a very interesting month uh, and uh, where mainly Hoad was the main actor. Okay. So, okay. Cheers. Wow. Brilliant. Um, so that's it from the Tao uh, development team. Um, we look forward to your questions in Telegram and on the next Q&A. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really strong month from all of us. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you in the next month. Thank you.